Welcome to video 5.2 for the ULIT AEDT programs adult learning in a digital context course. In this video, we will revisit the concept of reliability, but specifically how to enhance assessments so that the reliability is enhanced. And here she is, Ms. Educator. You'll remember her. She was very excited to take on a part-time teaching position and she had all of her lessons, or rather talks, with corresponding tests already set up. Now, more than likely, we have all experienced test taking within our educational histories, either as assessors or as assessees. So, although there may be more authentic ways to gather evidence of student learning for a variety of purposes, in some cases, you might, for example, teach 300 students and you may need to resort to including tests as part of your assessment practice. This video will explore issues of reliability specifically as they relate to test situations. However, consider how these topics may also apply to other assessment tasks. So before we begin, take a few moments, pause the video, and consider the following questions. To recap, Validity has to do with the accuracy of an assessment, whether or not it measures what it is supposed to measure. Even if a test is reliable, it may not provide a valid measure. Remember the vacuum scale example. If you obtain the same weight each day from the same scale and your weight hasn't changed, each time you step on it, providing your weight hasn't fluctuated, then you can count on the scale or the scale is reliable. So the consistency or reliability of the scale is good, but in the example in the last video, the scale was not accurate or valid because the person being weighed really weighed 70 kilograms and not 65. So the scale was reliable because it was consistent in providing the same measurement each and every day, but it was not accurate or valid because the person being weighed actually weighed 70 kilograms. So for the scale to be valid and reliable, not only does it need to tell you the same weight every time you step on the scale, demonstrating consistency or reliability, but it also has to measure accurately or measure what it was intended to measure, your actual weight, in order for it to be valid. So what is more important, validity or reliability? Well, how useful is a scale if you step on it each day and get an inaccurate measurement? So in the previous video, we looked at factors that enhance validity in assessment, or did the assessment measure what it was intended to measure? If you need to review the video, please do so now. Also ensure you have reviewed the resources for this week as well. So let's look at some issues of reliability that we need to consider especially for this educator. So reliability has to do with the results of the assessment, the measure, the score, and the consistency of that score. Again, like the scale, the reading, the consistency of that reading. Now classroom tests and other assessments must also consider the extent to which assessment results are consistent and stable. So can assessment results be perfectly stable? No. There are many factors that may contribute to the fluctuation of scores, and these factors can contribute to measurement error, and methods for determining reliability, essentially, are a means for determining how much measurement error there are in our results. Basically, we want to minimize measurement error as much as possible. So, what does this mean for instructors? Another way to think about reliability is to think about your students and whether they would achieve these results if they completed the same test at two different times. Or would they get the same results if they took a similar version of your test? So why is this important to think about? Well, if you're going to place value in the test result, then you need to consider if the scores or results are reliable or consistent. So we are talking about how error-free our assessments or tests are, but really there is no perfect reliability. Why is this? Well, random errors can create inconsistencies. Our goal is to minimize the errors so that we can enhance the reliability of the results. 
So what does this mean for instructors? Well, we can pay attention to some factors that can make a score less reliable or consistent. So your job is to figure out why these items could contribute to enhancing reliability. Be prepared to discuss this in the tutorial. First, consider the number of items on a quiz or test. More items, if homogeneous, have higher reliability. Why would this enhance the reliability? We'll talk about it during tutorial. Next, consider the wording and construction of test items. It is really important to consult a good resource about how to write good test items. Why and how does this enhance reliability? Be prepared to justify in the tutorial. Consult the resources for this week in the web space. Consider how the test is administered. Environmental factors such as the room in which the test will be completed. Is it too warm, too cold? Is the test being given after a holiday or on the last day of class? Why do we need to think about these factors as they relate to the test scores? What about objective versus subjective test items? If a test has items that are multiple choice, then there will be a correct response. But why do we need to create criteria for a more subjective type of test item, such as a short answer or essay question? Or if your class scores are all very high or all very low, then the reliability needs to be examined. Why? Consider student factors. Student factors may also need to be considered. Remember, if the purpose of assessment is to gather evidence of student learning and a student is ill, then why is the score not a reliable score? If your directions are clearly written, then why is reliability enhanced? Now, this item speaks to assessments in general. If you are going to give tests, then increasing the number of tests or assessments for the course itself enhances the reliability of the student final grades. Why? Lastly, if you assess a test or assignment with another assessor, by discussing ahead of time and determining the criteria for assessment, the reliability is enhanced. Or in other words, the assessment is more consistent or stable. Why? To determine the rationale for why and how these factors contribute to enhanced reliability, please revisit the core principles of assessment as well as this week's resources. So please consider these questions to help you consider Ms. Educator's scenario. So to recap, this video addressed validity and reliability and then moved to looking a little more closely at enhancing reliability in tests. We'll discuss these topics and questions in the tutorial. Thanks for watching.